Hey everyone, welcome to Spax Attack. <laughs> You. I'm still dancing over here, yo. I, I, I love our intro there. I'm enjoying it. Hey, welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the Spax Attack, where everything is all about Spax. And today, we went shopping again. That's all I did. I don't know about you, Chris. And, and so one time that I, I can tell you guys I'm a happy to be as close to 10 as possible. And you guys know my strategy. I'm always telling it. And I'm trying to be as close to 10 as possible. So I got some entries today that I'm happy about. And I'll tell you about them a little bit later. But Chris, I know you got some headlines for us. What's going on, man? What's up in the world? Yeah, we got uh, some earnings to talk about, right? So we you know, kind of discussed it yesterday on the show that after hours we were going to have earnings from uh, three former SPACs. And then also we had earnings from DraftKings this morning. So let's start with DraftKings. So that's ticker DKNG. Um, Of course, a former SPAC, one of the best performing ones out there. So fourth quarter revenue was $322 million, up 146% year over year. That beat the street estimate of $233 million. So they had 1.5 million monthly unique payers in the fourth quarter, up 44% and up 29% for the full year. Average revenue per monthly use, u- unique payer was $65 in the fourth quarter. So the, the key here with their earnings was they raised their full year guidance for fiscal 2021. So they now see revenue coming in a range of $900 million to $1 billion. Previous guidance was $750 million to $850 million. So this would be a new range of uh, growth of 40 to 55% for the full fiscal year. They said that the guidance was raised due to the strength in that fourth quarter and the additional state launches. So in the fourth quarter, they launched in Tennessee. And since that time in Q1, they launched in Michigan and Virginia. Um, so Michigan and Virginia represent 6% of the U.S. population. DraftKings is now live in 12 states, which covering 25% of the U.S. population. They're in more states for online sports betting than anyone in their peer group. You know, I can't stress it enough. 25% of the U.S. population is all that they have access to right now, and they're a market leader. So I still think there's, you know, room for growth there. Um, This is, you know, one of the best online sports betting peer play companies out there. Then last night, we had earnings from three former SPACs. So up first, we have Fisker, FSR. We, of course, talked about Fisker on the show yesterday. I own shares of the stock. This was one of my top 10 SPACs for 2021. So the the keys to earnings, because again, this is a pre-revenue company, they said they remain on track to start production of the Fisker Ocean SUV in the fourth quarter of 2021. That vehicle has 12,467 reservations. They're seeing reservations really increase um, on the retail side of things now. And they point out that surveys are showing that, you know, 70% of their uh, customers uh, are currently driving non-electric vehicles. So, you know, they're able to shift people that way. They highlighted that deal that they signed with Foxconn for the production of a second vehicle. They said that that second vehicle will be produced in 2023. Another key here was that they ended the quarter with $991 million in cash and no debt. So, you know, again, you talk about a pre-revenue company, one that needs to, you know, spend money to make money. You you have Fisker here, you know, with with plenty of cash at the current time. And, you know, again, they're, they're using partnerships with Magna and Foxconn now to produce those vehicles. So they can focus on the design and the marketing of that. And then this morning, we had a note out from Morgan Stanley with a $40 price target. So as you can see on that chart, 
Shares are ripping higher today, you know, on a day where there is a lot of things down. Fisker is one of the standout companies, you know, as Morgan Stanley sees the, the opportunity there. And then turning to SPCE, so this is Virgin Galactic. I also own shares of this one. They reported fourth quarter in full things again, pre-revenue company. So the highlights here, we're talking about their upcoming events. So they said they will roll out their second spaceship on March 30th. They have a planned next rocket powered space flight targeted to occur in May. And then they also highlighted an upcoming flight with the Italian Air Force that will be a revenue driver for the company. So they had over 600 reservations from uh, future astronauts who will take flight with the company to space at the end of that quarter. And then earnings from Velodyne last night. So this was the first public peer play LIDAR company, um, went public via SPAC, one of six companies now in the LIDAR space to use a SPAC. So fourth quarter revenue, $17.8 million. Down from last year, um, they contributed that to COVID-19 manufacturing shutdowns and not being able to fulfill certain customer orders. Um, they shipped a record 4,237 units in the fourth quarter. Uh, so again, higher revenue per unit shipped. Full year revenue of $95.4 million. They have a pipeline of 194 projects from 26 signed agreements. And they still see the opportunity for $1 billion in revenue from 2021 through 2025. And that's with signed agreements, the other key here. So it's signed agreements already for over a billion dollars. And then they also said that they have a pipeline of potential contracts that could be worth up to $4.4 billion in revenue. So I'm turning past earnings, some other specs to talk about and to watch. We had two new specs filed from Barry Sternlicht. So I want to highlight JWSM and SPFR. Those are two outstanding, um, you know, stacks from Barry Sternlicht. And when I say outstanding, that they're already out there, um, you know, that are searching for targets. With him filing for two more, maybe we see a deal announcement from one of those soon. So I know I have both of those on my watch list right now. We had a rumor that Indian online grocery store Grofers is in talks with several SPACs, including CFIV. That is according to the India Times. So again, you know, we use Bloomberg and Reuters a lot for uh, SPAC rumors. India Times isn't a typical source, but obviously it's a publication in that country, you know, where this online grocery store uh, has a presence. So I would trust that. Um, that they at least know, you know, that they have been considering a SPAC to go public. Then ARC funds, of course, went shopping yesterday on those sell-offs. So added in several SPACs across the ETFs. So we have OPEN, CMLF, EXPC, ACIC, and SKLZ, all um, additional shares added to those ETFs. So again, no new positions in SPACs from Kathy Wood and company, but she definitely added to those positions. One of our big movers yesterday, uh, NGA, so merging with Lion Electric, another SPAC that I own, up 8% yesterday to end the day. They announced that electric bus deal with the Los Angeles School District, uh, you know, one of the largest school districts in the U.S., then SBE approved the merger with ChargePoint. Shares ended the day down 5%. New ticker is going to be CHPT. I do own shares of SBE. Two vote dates set. We have BFT uh, voting on March 25th and LOAC voting on March 17th. So we will add those to our calendar. And then another SPAC to watch for, we have PSTH. So the Bill Ackman SPAC. Uh, you know, the largest SPAC out there that everyone wants to know what they may be buying. Um, it looks like they may be close to making an announcement. Bill Ackman took to Twitter, uh, interacted with some people. He, you know, confirmed what we thought that a second SPAC is launching from the company. And he also told people on Twitter that PSTH shareholders are going to get access to buy the second SPAC at the offering price. Again, not sure how we would make that happen. Um, but Ackman wants to see that, you know, go through. And then we turn to our calendar. 
So next week we have on March 5th, CFII voting on that merger um, with View, the smart window company. And then earnings on March 1st, we have CLOV, Clover Health, reporting earnings. So that's what I've got today, Mitch. All right. Hey, guys. Well, I was, I was hanging tight, getting a little excited, and and, and taking some buys. You know, sometimes you got to take some buys. So not going to be upset. But, hey, looking at some options today. So one thing we want to do is definitely get to our watch list so that you guys out there can know what we've been looking at all day long. So let's go ahead and let's get to our watch list here. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So pulling up the watch list here, guys, and going to look at some of the stocks that are up. And of course, we already talked about it, but Fisker getting frisky with Fisker. You heard it last night, Kramer getting frisky with Fisker. And I can't blame him. You guys, you guys heard me talk about this one for a long time. Uh, I'm still upset that I'm not in it. But hey, guys, that's just how it goes, right? The FOMO is real. So if you guys got FOMO out there, just be a little careful, you know, now start kind of measuring in where's the right price target. But like you mentioned, on a day where you're getting seeing a lot of red, this one up almost 30% now. What a day. All right, guys, uh, looking like the, the, the Reddit crowd trying to squeeze the CCIV. Is that what you have heard, Chris? Because that's, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, you know, so again, I still own shares of CCIV. Uh, getting a pop today, um, it looks like uh, several Reddit groups, you know, really trying to push that one higher. And then I also have an article out on Benzinga.com. Uh, Dave Portnoy taking a swing at CCIV today. Sounds like he bought $500,000 worth of shares. Um, you know, so we'll kind of keep an eye on that too and see if he uh, talks about if he's holding or when he sells here. All right, guys. So in my technical view, I'd be looking for a move closer towards 25. That's when I'd start getting interested because I could start risking towards the next level, which is 20. To me, um, right here, it'd be about a $10 risk, and that's a little bit too wide for me. Um, so I would look for a little bit closer down in my eyes. I'd look for 25, closer to 20. And then that's, to me, that's not a bad price, you know, for especially for what they acquired. Um, it's a good company. I, I have no doubts in that, but more along, where does the evaluation come into play? And that's always what happens after this moment, guys. Once the definitive agreement comes on, it's about it's no longer a guessing game. So now it's about trying to figure out where this evaluation is. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we got on here. Um, looking at, at, at one up that I was looking actually to get into, which is TPGY, but it's a little expensive in my case, and you guys know how I am. I'm just closer towards that 10 type of guy. But it, what, what's up with this one, Chris? And it's interesting near the price now, back to where kind of December 15th. Yeah, you know, to me, this might be a reaction of SBE falling, um, kind of the peer player here, uh, that charging infrastructure. So SBE falls 5% after voting through on the deal. So it looks like maybe TPGY, similar thing where, you know, we're seeing valuation come down. Um, so again, I like all these charging infrastructure players going forward. But, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, who wins all those deals that Biden wants, you know, to pass throughout the U.S. and who gets the partnerships um, with some of the auto companies. So that's another story to watch there. The interesting uh, price point for me is 19. Watch that 19 whole dollar. Let's see if that holds. That's kind of like some support right there. Maybe it bounces off of that. We'll, we'll see. All right, let's keep going on here. Let's see what else we got on our watch list. Do you want to mention maybe some of the ones that you were looking at, Chris, or, or maybe got into today? Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about some new ones that started trading today. And, you know, a uh, uh, big shout out to Benzinga Pro, right? So I am a user ultimately, and that's what we use here on the show. Our news desk team is amazing because I'm able to see right away, you know, when these IPOs of these SPACs start pricing and when they go public. 
So this one that we have up here is FSNBU. So this is brand new, started trading today. So the units include one third of a warrant. I was able to buy these units today at $10.02. That, that is just insanely cheap for a brand new SPAC trading in units. So essentially, if you break down the math of that, what you get in the unit is one common share and a third of a warrant. So if you take out the common share and assume a $10 you know, price point, which is the floor, which actually it ends up usually being above $10 that you can exchange back in you know, if you don't like the deal, that values that third of a warrant at two cents so the total warrant is valued at six cents. You can't find SPAC warrants for six cents right now. You know, you're lucky right now if you can find warrants under a dollar fifty. Those are the cheap ones that I'm looking at right now. So then this is the same team that landed a deal for Money Lion. So if you look at Money Lion, uh, F U S E, those commons right now are ten fifty nine. The warrants are a dollar eighty three. You know, in the past, those commons hit twelve ninety, and the warrants traded over three dollars. I'm paying ten dollars and two cents. So my downside here it is essentially nothing because it's I can trade in that common share at, at ten dollars plus interest, and then I still have that partial warrant where I can sell that warrant. You know, in fifty two days when these split into common shares and warrants, so I can make my money back. You know just like that. That's why that $10 price point is so important. And why, you know, Mitch keeps talking about, you know, trying to get these facts between 10 and 11. So a lot of times you've struggled to find commons under, you know, 1050. And now we have units trading under 1050. That's just, I think, great value to me. And then a couple of other new ones today, we have KCACU. So this is Kensington Capital. This is the same group that landed QuantumScape, uh, ticker QS, one of the, you know, it was the best performing SPAC last year by peak uh, dollar amount. So these units priced today at $11 and they're now trading around 1080. So you can get a common share and a fourth of a warrant for 1080. And again, that's from a management team that's highly respected for landing that QuantumScape. I think when these things split, you're going to have common shares trading over $11 and who knows what the warrants will be trading at. So a great opportunity on day one, a day with SPACs down, you know, to, to target some of these units trading lower. And then a couple more just to highlight quick to show you guys, um, TWLVU, that one also priced today. Units are actually under $10, $9.97, and that includes one third of a warrant. This group is targeting Western and Eastern Europe or the Middle East. So again, $9.97 for a unit and you get a third of a warrant. You can trade in your common share for $10 plus interest if this deal, you know, if you don't like it. So, you know, you pay $9.97 and, and you're actually buying over $10 in value. So, you know, again, we talk about risk reward. Here you have the ultimate case of, you know, limited, limited risk and high reward because who knows who they're going to acquire? Who knows what shares are going to do on that day that that is announced? You have, you know, high opportunity here. And then another one that I own is LEGOU. So this one is not new today, but it is still trading as units around $10.20. This comes with a full warrant. So you buy a unit for $10.20, you get a common share and a warrant. They're targeting renewables, infrastructure, energy, construction, and industrial. Uh, you know, so some high growth areas there, to me, that just, it screams value that you're able to get these units under 1050. So again, I did buy um, the first one there. So FSNBU, and I do own LEGOU, and I'm keeping the other two on my watch list. Um, you know, it, it's about 315 Eastern time right now. There's a chance that, you know, maybe I end up picking up one of those other ones. So um, before I get into any more, Mitch, uh, let's talk about what you uh, were able to score today. Well, you know, I, I just took a lesson right right there, you know, by the man, the only, the brain. It's Chris Ketchy, you already know, guys. The unit's under 11. My man taking me to school today. I can't blame him. 
it, I, I, you got to take notes sometimes, even from the master, you know. Um, if, if you guys aren't following my man, you guys already know where to find him. Hey, one thing that I noticed here that really stood out to me was that KCAC, just because, like you mentioned, I mean, you're, you're talking about a really successful team. And so at that price, especially what I saw on the chart, I saw 2.2 million shares traded right out the open. And now it's under that pricing. So regardless if it, you couldn't really be shorting the stock there. So those were buys there. Um, so what I would say is, hey, take a look at this one. I'm going to take a look at this one myself. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how low we can get it. But, you know, you know my rule. You know, I'm a 1050 type of guy. But I'll see if it scoops down for me. And, and if it does, I'll take it. I got a couple today. So I want to talk a little bit about what I got, guys, but definitely great lesson, Chris. I, I like how you went into units today. And, you know, it's it's important to learn some of the different aspects. You know, we a lot of people talk about warrants. To me, the volatility in warrants is, is why I stay out of them, just because you really got to stay on top of them. Um, but uh, what I would say is at least looks like units might be more of my thing, too. So, hey, I appreciate the lesson, Chris. So let's let's... Let's go into the next one here. So let's go into some of the ones that I got. Let's pull up the portfolio, see what I've gotten filled because order is still out. Got some fills today on two that I, I did a little screener for. And, and, and I just want to mention a little bit what I filtered for. So the first thing I filtered for were, you know, got to got to filter for specs. So I filtered for specs. I got that set out. And then I, I went to pricing, right? Because we were, we're getting really good discounted pricing right now, right? And so a lot of times you hear Chris and I mentioned that 10 to 11 show. I was even going cheaper than that, Chris. I was trying to find the ones that were dirt cheap. I changed mine to 950 to 1050 on the screener. I just wanted to find things that were literally below my buying point, which is to me 1050. Um, so with that being said, at that point, I said, why not separate by top market cap of these? So then at least I got some potential of investment behind it. That gives me, you know, it could get a, a sexy name, you never know. And, and so I went after two that I felt were, were pretty good. Um, first one up, was one that I really was interested, but didn't expect to get it cheap. And that was CRHC. So let me go ahead up and pull up that chart here. And Chris, tell us a little bit about this SPAC before I, I talk through the technicals. Yeah, so this is a SPAC from uh, Gary Cohen. He's a well-respected name in the SPAC world, um, you know, he's also on like the board of directors of IBM. Um, you know, he's held office with a bunch of publicly traded companies. He comes from Goldman Sachs. Um, you know, just he's, he's done SPACs before to me, this one, you know, is, is great at the price point that you got it at today. Yeah. So we'll, we'll use our little all H on, on Benzinga pro. And I drew this line kind of across and I said, you know what? It doesn't look too bad at 1030, you know, so uh, I had an order out at first 1030. It kind of went through that level. So I, 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 when it was coming down through it, I kind of canceled and let it bounce a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not mad at my entry. I got in guys at 1038 here and, and I'm not going to be upset here. Uh, I, ha I can see kind of my flooring here and it, to, to me to get into this floor where a whole lot of volume got in here in the 1120s. I'm excited to be in this one. This one has a market cap of 1.11 billion. So we'll see what they get. We'll see what they get. All right. The next one up here. Um, next one I grabbed. And, and, and a part of this is, is a lot of, from Chris was, um, you know, I, I just, I, I've heard him talk about this one and I was interested. So, you know, I did a little research on mine and, and, and I went for it. So, F pack here, F pack guys. That's far peak acquisition. What's up with F pack, Chris? Yeah, so F pack. This is one that we highlighted on our crypto show. So targeting fintech. This is Thomas Farley. He's the former president of the New York Stock Exchange. And when he was with the New York Stock Exchange, he was pretty vocal about getting into cryptocurrency. 
he's been a supporter of it for years when, you know, you saw a lot of regulators and exchanges really kind of shy away from it. He was at the forefront. So to me, you have Farley and you have FinTech. I think they go after crypto. Yeah, you know, if you look on the chart, you know, I just liked how close I was. I got it to ten. I was able to get in. Also, it, the today's low is ten oh eight, but I, I got pretty ent- good entry here at ten fifteen. Not going to be mad at that ten fifteen entry and give myself an ability to be as close to ten as possible, and and give myself a, a good risk in return. So you know. I'm pretty diversified now, guys, in my SPACs account. Just to give you guys some information, like th- this kind of uh, position is really only 7% seven, 7 of my diversity for my account. So just to give you guys some di- how, how diverse I, I've built up this now SPAC portfolio, um, the market cap on this one is $617 million. So n- not too bad there. I think that's that's a significant amount. I always like when they're above that 500 mark. To me, those look like big companies and it always gives them a, a potential to get an even bigger company there. So w- we'll see what we get and, and we'll, we'll have to go through some of our uh, SPACs in, in a little bit to see how they react. Uh, overall, not looking too bad on the day. And this is what I love really about SPACs, guys, is like if I look down at my account, you know, it's it's really only down 0.008%. And so that that's kind of like what I like to see. I don't know about you, Chris, but it, th- those are days where I can just not stress, you know, and, and that's why I like to diversify in SPACs, guys. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. So before we get on out of here, just want to take a look at one or two more here and mention some that I'm looking at. Um, so... First up is PIPP, just because of the pullback and such a significant pullback. I'm going to go to the daily so you can see how much of a pullback this is. But this one came all the way up to a high of 1494. And it really opened on that January 7th at like kind of this 1050 area. Um, You have an open of 1075 and a high there of 1080. So right now we're at 1080s and we had a low of 1066. To me, this is an interesting chart just because it's pulled back that much. You know, um, when when you get that kind of pullback, you, you kind of expect it to kind of kind of get near that pull pullback bounce. But uh, I'll keep an eye on this one. There was a significant volume in this kind of harmony. I think someone thought this kind of 1180s was going to hold, and they. They put a significant amount there. There's 1.5 million there. So you might find some resistance there when it gets back up there. But definitely, I feel like someone got caught there. So if someone did get caught there, this could turn around and get back up towards their level. We'll, we'll take a look. That's PIP and that's Pine Island Acquisition. The last one I'd mention and, and maybe you want to give some comments on is RSI. What are you thinking about RSI, Chris? As It looks like we have earnings 12 days from now, confirmed on March 10th after the close. Yeah, so RSI, you know, again, this is a a player in sports betting, but more importantly in the iGaming side of things, so online casino. The the thing that strikes me on this one, and, you know, again, we've talked about this one from the start. We had Niccolo DeMasi from DMY Technology who, you know, brought this company public with his SPAC on the show. They just signed a partnership with Penn uh, National. So what they essentially did was they swapped uh, some New York rights uh, with Penn, and then they gained access to three states and possibly a fourth, which is Texas. So they now have access to three more states for online gaming, and then possibly Texas if Texas legalizes sports betting. So to me, that was a smart move, right? They're, they're going to still have access to New York, but they're also giving up a, a skin there, which is incredibly valuable, you know, in the online casino space. Uh, but they're also gaining access to other states. And as we've seen with sports betting and iGaming, you know, it's, it's kind of about getting access to every state and also then getting share there. So, you know, they have strong market share in Illinois and I think Iowa, some of the smaller states. But that iGaming, right, the more profitable side of things, the online casino, they're, they're a major player. So, you know, RSI is, is more of the casino online versus the sports betting. But again, that's more profitable. So in the long run, 
might be the better stock option. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know, I, I, like I've always said about that industry, it's state by state. <laughs> and you see it. You see it has the revenues increase. You see the guidance from multiple companies like we talked about DraftKings earlier and the guidance being put out further and further forward. And, and why is that? Because states are actually getting pushed because of the pandemic. And because of that, I think, you know, we even heard it from our interview last week from um, Nicolo that that's, that's kind of what he saw, you know, and, and that state by state, the, the pressure is on to, to get to legalization. I think, you know, uh, Florida, Florida, I think they're going to push it pretty fast. You know, I think Florida is really kind of more in that, uh, I, I, I talk to my Florida buddies because if you guys know, I grew up in Florida. So they're always telling me like, man, I can't even believe it's all not already done here. So we'll see what happens with Florida, but definitely it's going to be interesting in this industry. And like always guys, we'll keep going at it on Spax attack guys, finding what we, what we get into, what information we find executives. We got some interesting executives next week like always guys we're gonna have some interviews we've been working hard to get back at you guys we'll see you guys on monday um looks like uh, i'm probably gonna have to take a, a little step out but hey uh, i'll tell you guys uh, I'll, I'll be back on tuesday with a really good interview and we'll, we'll be back at it like always guys check out our gear as you guys see chris with that spax attack shirt join up send us some pictures you know what? We need to we need to do another give, giveaway. We'll, we we'll, we'll we do a giveaway we'll next do a week. Giveaway next week for some some of these awesome shirts. I I love this shirt, guys. And I mean, you know what? Look, uh, Axe Attack. I mean, that, that's I don't know how I'm going to make it happen, but I, I'm going to do a big giveaway next week. I I got to do like twenty shirts. Twenty Let's shirts. Do it. Let's do it. Twenty shirts. You guys hear that? Twenty shirts. I'm going to get yelled at about that. But smash hey, the like right now. If smash you the like, smash, guys. Twenty if you shirts. Share, smash the like. <laughs> Hey, Leave I want to see at least 200 likes on this video. Shirt. Let us know, guys. The SPACs attack is here, guys. We'll be back at you guys, and we'll see you guys on Monday.